David here with Figboot on Pens. At the conclusion of each year, I have traditionally posted either one or multiple top 10 lists. But last year I did something a bit different and I wanted to continue that tradition, and that was highlight some of my favorite things from this past year. While outside of the pen world, this has been a very challenging year for everyone. I am thankful to have been able to uh, work from home for these last nine months. Uh, the company I work for is in a strong position to weather the challenges that businesses now face. Uh, I am grateful for that. Uh, in my house, we are being exceedingly cautious and doing our best to stay healthy and stay safe. Uh, we have been very fortunate that so far this year has been filled only with inconveniences rather than more serious life-altering events. And I hope the same can be said for you and your families. Uh, in regard to pens and related items, this year has been a great year of discovery for me. Uh, new brands and lots of new products. Uh, now, the items that I discuss here uh, might be either brand new products introduced this year or something which has been around for a while that has only recently made its way into my collection or attention. And other than uh, two or three of these items, you will see here that each has been reviewed on my channel sometime this year. Um, I will put links in the notes below to all of the reviews. What I have done is break things out into three different categories. Uh, my favorite pens, uh, inks, and then some other items. Uh, and then also I'll mention a few of my favorite videos from this past year as well. So in order to see what made it to my list of favorite things from this past year, please join me over here at camera two. To begin with, I wanted to talk about my favorite items in the other category, and I have four to share. These would be things that are kind of related to the hobby. And to start it off, we have this A5 notebook cover from Pop-Off Leather. I'm kind of showing it here sideways so it fits nicely in the frame. Um, while this is a nice leather cover, uh, the cover itself isn't why it made my list. It's because that this was a DIY kit. Uh, Pop-Off Leather has a number of these kits. Uh, they basically send you all of the parts and provide you with clear instructions to help you along the way. Now, I'm not too artsy and craftsy, so going into this, I was a little concerned that, you know, I would, you know, produce something a little bit embarrassing, uh, but that wasn't the case, you know, that uh, I thought I did a pretty good job. You can see here the stitching is pretty nice, uh, even here on the ends where uh, you have to kind of finish the threads and burn it off, that uh, I thought that turned out well. Uh, that you can purchase these by themselves, uh, already assembled, but the DIY kit made for a fun project. Uh, and something, you know, that everyone could use nowadays is a fun little project every now and then. And this was definitely that. Next up, we have an item which I haven't reviewed, but I've been enjoying using on a daily basis, and that is the Penwell Craftsman. This is the latest Penwell model from the company Good Made Better. Uh, previously, they have released models like this one here, which is the standard kind of traditional shape, uh, and then this one here is called the Traveler. Um, both of these utilize a suction material on the bottom to stick to the desk. Uh, while that system works well, um, and it doesn't stick permanently, Permanently. You could just take it right off. Uh, this one uses, uh, this new model is made from concrete and has quite a bit more heft than the previous model, so it stays put on your desk without the need for adhesive material. Um, it does a good job of holding a wide variety of pens. Uh, this was my pen of the day today. Uh, if you care to see my pen of the day, all you have to do is just subscribe to my Instagram where I'm at figboot11. This was my pen today, which is the Netuno Black Sands. And you can see that fits in here just like that. And then what you do is you kind of unscrew it and let it sit in here. And then when you want to use your pen, you can just take it out. And then when you're done, you can put it back. I find it really useful for pens that uh, maybe don't have a clip and don't have a roll stop. So rather than rolling around the desk, you can set it inside here and you know that they're not going anywhere. Uh, now, the Craftsman is currently being offered via a Kickstarter campaign, which if you're watching this video the day I am posting it, will only be open for a day or two. After the campaign ends, there are plans to offer this model on the Good Made Better site as a standard item, but it might be a while for that happen, to happen, so that if this interests you, you might want to quickly check out the Kickstarter campaign. There will be a link to it in the notes below. 
Third up in this section is an item that I recently reviewed, and the inclusion on this list isn't due to a present bias. Uh, it wasn't without its flaws, but it's something that I feel was really worthwhile, and that is the Galen Leather Stack and Store Pen and Ink Storage System. It has a large tray where you can store your inks, uh, and then stackable trays to hold your pens. Now, the main issue that I had with this item was that each of the trays could stand to be increased in height just a little bit in order to accommodate a larger number of ink bottles as well as girthier pens. And Galen has plans on their next production run to do just that. Uh, and they'll be increasing the ink tray by five millimeters, I believe, and the uh, pen trays each by three millimeters. Um, it's nice to see a company listening to the feedback from their community and adjusting their products to be uh, more usable. But I think it's functional, it's expandable, uh, it looks nice, uh, and it comes at a reasonable price. So I think it's worth checking out. Okay, last up in this section is something I consider to be very special. Uh, it is this wax seal stamp made by Jonathan Brooks of the Carolina Pen Company. Uh, the material here on the handle is Jonathan's well-known primary manipulation. Uh, and then the stamp itself is an image of Bigfoot, as imagined by the author and illustrator Graham Romeo, uh, whose trilogy of Bigfoot humor books provided the origin of the name of this channel. Uh, if you'd care to hear, hear the full story behind the origins of the Fig Boot name, uh, you can check out my very first Q&A video, which would be Q&A number one. Uh, in regard to this stamp, Jonathan's been doing some high quality engraving work lately and he's been making these stamps, as well as doing some really nice custom nib engraving. I provided him with this image and he was then able to convert this into a stamp. Uh, he offers this service on the Carolina Pens website. Again, there will be a link to it in the notes below, but I just adore this. I think the material is, material is great uh, and then I like the image that we created as well. Okay, on to section two, and that would be inks. I have four different inks that I wanted to highlight. First up is the Three Oysters and Doming the Sea of Notions ink kit. Uh, this ink comes in one of the coolest boxes you will ever see. I just love the artwork. You are provided with two things here uh, in this kit. There is a fairly saturated blue ink. This is what the blue looks like in its most pure form. Uh, and then there are these mermaid tears, which are used to dilute the blue to your desired shade. Do I need all of my inks to be DIY projects? No, but being able to play around with this and making the different shades was a lot of fun. Uh, the ink is very nice as well. There are a very few of these kits still available. Uh, if you are interested, you can check out my review on this item and there is a link where you can find these uh, inks at Shigur Inks, uh, the only place that I'm aware of here in the US which carries this unique kit. Next was a very fun ink, which was the Papier Plume number 13 Mystery Ink. Uh, this was a launch where you purchased the ink without knowing what the actual color was. You found out once it arrived. Uh, and this is what the color is. Kind of a nice blue-gray. Now, something I didn't show in my review was that each of these bottles arrived with this cute little mask on here. Uh, now, I didn't include it in the video because uh, I recorded the review prior to them launching the product and they had sent me one with the mask, uh, but then they weren't sure whether or not they were going to uh, include one with every order. So I didn't want to show it and then have it not show up for people, uh, but they did include them uh, and I thought it was a very nice touch. And uh, on top of that, it's a very cool ink and it was a fun little project where you uh, were able to purchase an ink without knowing what it is and uh, I think most of the people were satisfied. I really didn't hear anyone complaining about the color. I heard a lot of compliments on it. The third ink on my list has a rather long backstory but it is the Krishna Pakaza. Um, the short version of the story is that Krishna produced their ink in these very unique bottles and then right before launch they discovered that similar bottles had been produced by a different company which contested that they own the intellectual property. Uh, Krishna ended up working in conjunction with that company and was still able to distribute the ink. Um, it's a very nice blue with a decent amount of sheen to it. Uh, it's a limited edition ink and the last time I checked they still had a little bit of inventory left on the Krishna site, so it might be worth checking out. Um, it's a very unique bottle, it looks pretty cool sitting on your desk, and then on top of that it's a very cool shading ink. 
Last up in regard to inks, I wanted to highlight Kiwi inks. Um, they make some very nice colors with some fantastic names. Uh, like there is uh, Nebula Space Kitty uh, and things like Tray Colory, which is this color right here, or Mermaid Black, or they had a Tray Colory Purple, um, which was another really solid color. Um, the one thing is that they can do is they can they can custom color and custom create any ink that you would like with a wide number of options in regard to sheen and color and shimmer. Um, and I had them create a couple of custom colors for me. This one here was a Lakers purple where it was a purple with a gold shimmer. Uh, and then here is a Padre Brown, which is a brown with a gold shimmer to it. Uh, and then I have uh, Aztec Red, which is a red with a black shimmer that it's tough to see in here. But since the Az San Diego State Aztec colors are red and black, then I thought that would be a cool combination for this ink. Um, the inks are a quality product and coming up with your own unique combinations that mean something to you is a lot of fun. That's it for the inks. Now let's get to the meat of this review, my top 10 favorite pens of the year. Uh, to begin with, I wanted to mention one honorable mention, and that would go to the pen that I tested this year, which provided the best pure writing experience. Uh, and that would be the SD DuPont Line D Diamond Guilloche. Uh, it is a luxury pen at a luxury price, but the nib was glorious. Um, I don't currently have any SD DuPont pens in my collection, but that might need to change in the future. Okay. On to the 10 pens. Uh, these are in no particular order. I didn't want to rank these as well. I just wanted to share with you the 10 pens that I very much enjoyed discovering this year. And to kick off the list, I have a pen from Ryan Krusak, and that is the Legend 16 Ebony Heartwood and Sapwood. Uh, what makes this pen special? Well, this. Uh, the, on this ebony tree, there is a transition in the wood where it goes from this nice chestnut brown to a solid black. So this is one piece of wood. It's not two different wo woods glued together. Um, a quick story about this pen. My pal Jonathan Brooks had purchased one of these and I really liked it. Uh, then at, at a show last year, I can't really remember which show, um, but Ryan had another one of these for sale at his table. I kind of hummed and hawed over it for a while and decided that I would uh, look around the show more and potentially come back and pick it up later. Uh, I, you know, Later on, I decided to purchase it, so I went back to his table and it was gone. So lesson learned. If you are at a show and you see something unique that you like, just go ahead and get it. I had to wait several months for Ryan to find more of this wood. Uh, and after he did, uh, I was happy to purchase this pen from him. I think it's a unique pen and it looks pretty cool. I just think this transition between the, uh, the, the two different colors is just awesome. And then on top of that, Ryan does a good job of tuning his nibs and it performs very nicely as well. Next up is a pen from Leonardo. I've become a big fan of Leonardo. They seem to continually knock it out of the park with each new release. And that was certainly the case for me with this pen, the Fiore Grande. Um, I have two of them here. This is the blue Pusitano. Uh, and then this one is the purple model. Um, I love the material used for these pens with the blue having lots of nice swirls and color uh, variations. Uh, and then there's the purple here with more of a velvety look with lots of chatoyants. Um, this purple model here is equipped with their 14 karat gold uh, elastic nib. You can get some healthy line variation with this nib with minimal effort. Um, I really love the size and shape of these pens, as well as the weight. They feel substantive. Um, these models are great. I, I really look forward to seeing what, what Leonardo comes up with uh, in the future, because uh, everything that they've come out with so far, I've really been a big fan of. Third on my list is my favorite pen from Watcher this year, and that is the Kiei Irushi. Um, this pen is made from ebonite, and is topped with a nice matte Arushi finish, uh, which gives it a, a real muted reddish brown color that I feel is an interesting look. But the distinguishing feature of this pen uh, is the leaf. 
Uh, Wancher's goal with these pens was to de depict scenes of nature with the combination of Japanese natural leaves and natural arushi. Uh, the name of the technique is called kinuri, which is comprised of the Japanese words for seasons, reflection, and lacquering. But this is a leaf from a Japanese rose bush. Uh, it is dyed with a gold powder and then applied to the barrel and then uh, covered over with a transparent arushi. Um, I really like seeing the natural elements of the leaf. Uh, and the gold, while it looks very prevalent here, uh, is actually fairly subtle overall. Um, I just love pens like this with unique treatments. Um, if someone sees this pen, it is definitely a conversation starter. Speaking of cool treatments, next up is a pen from Bennu. This is the Golden Flame. Uh, this pen was offered as a limited edition early in the year. Uh, you can see here that this one was pen number 11 of 30. Um, this is a standard design for Bennu, but what makes this pen special is the underlying material as well as the unique paint treatment. Uh, the, pen, the paint actually contains actual gold. You can see it here. They take gold leaf and then they mix it with some water and then they mix that into some paint uh, and then the flames are painted on and then before polishing the application is burnished. Um, I think the final result is fantastic. I like how you could just barely make out some of the underlying material here uh, in this black acrylic. It just gives the flames a little bit more of a dimension to it. Um, it reminds me of the little sparks around a roaring fire. It's a neat effect, and I hope that Bennu does some more special artistic projects like this in the future. Fifth up on this list are two pens which are fairly similar, so I decided to lump them together here. The pens are from Monty Winfield, and they are the High Water as well as the Micarta. Uh, if you're not familiar with the company Monty Winfield, it is a brand based here in the U.S. out of Colorado and is run by a gentleman by the name of Jeremiah Hackett. Um, he produces a number of unique custom nibs as well as on occasion some pens. Let's just look at the High Water really quick. The cap is made from a wound carbon fiber, uh, and then the trim is titanium. And then we have this barrel, which is made from micarta, which is a composite material comprised of layers of resin and cotton fiber. Um, on the high water, it has a high polished finish. And then here on the micarta version, uh, it's more of a matte finish. Now, Check out this section here on the high water. This thing is amazing. If I ever did a video on my favorite sections, this would definitely make the list. It is titanium uh, and then hand chased with a finishing tool that's typically used to make jewelry. It is unique and I love it. Okay, five down and five to go. Next up, we have another pen from Wancher, which is the Sakai Sugaru Arushi. Um, I've said this many times, but I like pens that, in my opinion, have a high cool factor, and I feel that this pen has just that. Um, the base of this pen is sandalwood, and then many layers of colored arushi lacquer are applied unevenly, creating peaks and valleys on this pen. Several months later, after the arushi is dried, the artisans will polish the pen down uh, and create this unique finished product. I care for it a great deal. I really like also how the treatment carries over to the section. Uh, it would have been easy just to make a, like a plain black section, but I like the fact that the section has the same treatment to it. Uh, and I just think overall this pen looks very, very cool. Uh, and then on top of that, the pen performs nicely as well. Next on the list is a pen with an emotional connection for me. A pen is a pen, but one with an emotional connection is all that more special. And this is the Aurora 88 Black Mamba. Uh, first of all, this is a great pen. Uh, it's a bit smaller than I typically prefer, but the distinguishing features of this pen are its satin ruthenium trim, as well as the diamond guilloche snakeskin pattern on the cap and the barrel. Uh, it's a unique texture, which is very interesting to the touch. It's a cool tactile experience. Uh, this ruthenium plated 18 karat gold nib really matches the rest of the pen as well. I am a big Los Angeles Lakers fan and the death this year of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the others aboard that helicopter really hit hard. 
Uh, Kobe's nickname was Black Mamba, so I felt that purchase the, purchasing this pen would be an appropriate remembrance of him, his outstanding physical abilities, as well as his unmatched competitive drive. Uh, this pen helps remind me to never give up trying to get better at everything you do. Okay, three more to go. And here we have the Faceted Pocket 6 from Shone Design. Now, this pen has a number of elements I typically don't care for. Uh, pocket pens really don't do it for me most of the time, and I've stated on many occasions my dislike for pens which screw to post. But these things work for me on this pen. Uh, this model here is brass. Uh, this pattern here is very cool. It's machined using a lathe with milling cutters and is designed to look almost crystal-like. Um, it is a consistent pattern, but not too obvious. Um, it's an interesting tactile feeling, and it also serves the purpose of helping you maintain a solid grip on this pen when you're carrying it around. Um, it does quickly and easily twist to post, and the uh, coolest thing about this pen is that it packs a number six nib, hence the name Pocket Six. Uh, Shown Design continues to come out with new and unique designs for their pocket pens, uh, and this one here is fantastic. For the penultimate pen on this list, I have something that is an exclusive offering by Goulet Pens, and that would be the Stipula Carbon Florentia. Um, I, you know, I had purchased a different Stipula model some years back and really wasn't impressed by it, so for quite some time I shied away from the brand. Uh, when I saw this model, though, I thought I would give it a chance, and I'm really glad that I did. Um, first of all, I just love the woven carbon fiber. I think the carbon fiber look is really cool. I also like the blue accents. I think it really plays nicely off of the black carbon fiber here, even the really nice blue section. Um, on top of that, it really provides a pleasurable writing experience. Um, it has significantly changed my overall opinion of Stipula as a brand, and I would be open to purchasing more of their pens down the line. The last pen on this list, and it's another twofer, I have two different colors of the same pen from the Woodshed Pen Company, and that would be the blue and purple models of the Shimmer. Uh, these pens were released as part of a Kickstarter project by Mike Allen, the gentleman behind the Woodshed Pen Company. His goal behind the campaign was to purchase a CNC machine, which can be a very expensive piece of equipment. And he wanted to purchase this to make the pens for this campaign, as well as improve his production quality and efficiency for his other pens he produces as well. The campaign was very successful, and it's been fun to see Mike document his progression with his new equipment. Uh, in regard to these pens, I, I like variety in my collection. And while I don't need an entire collection full of sparkly pens, you know, I like having a few things that are different to my personal tastes. Uh, the way the light hits these flakes in this material really adds some life to these pens. Um, they don't post, but they are long enough to comfortably use. Uh, you know what, I do like these pens, and I like what they represent. Uh, they represent someone growing and improving their business, and I look forward to seeing what new creations Mike comes up with on his new CNC machine. That's it in regard to pens, but I had one shorter list I quickly wanted to review, and that would be my top three favorite videos I created this year. Uh, by the end of this year, I will have posted 96 videos. That's two videos a week for the entire year, except for a couple of weeks where I slacked off a bit. Maybe next year, I'll try to get that up to 100. Uh, there have been some videos that I've been really proud of. I thought the one for Papier Plumes number 13 was a lot of fun. I was presented with the challenge of how to do a review on an ink that I couldn't show because it needed to be a surprise when you received it. So I knew I wanted to shoot it in black and white, but then I decided to give it more of a film noir feel to give it a reason to be in black and white. Another video that was really fun was my April Fool's video on hotel pens. Uh, that originated as a request from some of my co-workers. Uh, they wanted me to review these hotel pens, and I decided to make it rather satirical. Uh, my intent was to make something for my co-workers' enjoyment, and if it turned out well, then I would share it with everyone else. I liked how it turned out, and I think my main concern was when, since I really played the humor rather deadpan, I was slightly concerned that folks would watch the video and think that I was serious. But everyone got the joke. Or at least I hope they did.
And finally, my favorite traditional review of the year would probably be for the Mont Blanc uh, Moctezuma. It is an utterly unique pen. Uh, I enjoy reviews where I get to do lots of historical research and tell compelling stories, and that pen had a lot of things to talk about. Uh, in addition to the pen itself, uh, I was pleased with the way that one turned out. So there you have it another year of reviews. I really didn't do anything to celebrate this, but at the end of October, it was the five-year anniversary of this channel. Uh, it has been a lot of fun. Uh, I have enjoyed the creative outlet of producing content. Uh, the professional relationships that I've built have been amazing, as well as the significant broadening of my social circle with tons of new pen friends. I look forward to being able to produce bigger and better things this upcoming year. I have a couple of projects that I've been working on for a very long time, which hopefully will finally come to fruition uh, as long as the world itself gets itself under control and I'm able to get out of the house sometime within this year. We'll see how that goes. But I greatly appreciate all of the support as well as the time that you've taken out of your days to watch my videos. And I hope that it has at least provided some solid information as well as some entertainment for you as well. Okay, I hope you stay safe and stay healthy. And until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.